What's up everyone? My name is Mike Will at m.visuals. Welcome to today's video. It's one of the questions I get asked most on Instagram and it's all to do with light painting and kind of how I go about it from the framing to the settings to what light stick I use. So for this light painting tutorial, we're gonna be using the Nanlite Pavotube 2 15X. So this Pavotube actually just came out last week. This video is not sponsored, but Nanlite did send me the Pavotube. And we have used this Pavotube in other videos actually as a light filler. So it's a really useful light to have around. So this Nanlite has a full color spectrum as well as some special effects. We're gonna head out now into London and see what we can capture. It's just rained, which is perfect for light painting. Hopefully the rain stays away. Let's head out and see what we can capture. So the first location we are at, you can see St. Paul's is here in the background. And we're just gonna basically get creative with this frame um, right here. We're gonna try and get some light painting, some leading lines. So there's two ways you can take this photo. If you're with a friend, you can get them to do it uh, and set up like a two second timer. If you're on your own, you can set up like a five or 10 second timer. But I'm with Andy, so over to you, big man. And I'm gonna jump in frame. Okay, so Andy's now shooting. Okay, so that was a four second timer and I stood very still. And then I'm gonna come forward, away, and then off the camera. And then hopefully, yeah, that wasn't the one. And then, yeah, so basically what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go back to that same position, but I need to make sure my light painting's better. So when I come round to the side, I need to come out into the frame more and kind of use the leading lines. So, Andy, over to you. So you wanna be as still as possible. And then, yeah, when you're ready. So I've got four seconds to get back to the camera. One, two, and off we go. So I'm going out, back in, and up. Oh, made it. Cool, we'll just keep, keep trying. So now it's just the second shot we're gonna keep going for. So a lot of people always think that maybe it takes like one take. It, usually some of these we'll have done for like an hour at a time to make sure that you get the right shape, I guess. So for this, I'm trying to go out, back and through. So we'll just try it again. Go. I came out a little bit. I can't have to go quite as far. This can be another one of those moments where it's take one, take two, take 50. Oh, I don't know if I made it that time. <laughs> I don't know if I got that one right. The other one was, felt really good, this one. Oh, that's cool, yeah, there we go, boom. So something we've actually managed here, which I always try and do, is to bring it to the corner of the frame, because that'll basically draw the viewer's eye in. So you can see it's there. So even with a crop on IG, then that'll be perfect. So we're gonna get one more where the exposure is a little bit higher, because I wanna make sure that we've kind of exposed for the bridge and some pools. And I'm gonna go back in frame and stand there and then hope the light stick's not overexposed. Maybe I'll turn it off halfway through. Where's the off button? There it is. I didn't like my legs. I'm gonna change my leg position. Because usually I put my leg on something. So most of you guys will have seen the old leg up trick. Yeah, way better. So I just pretended I was leaning my leg on something. <laughs> yeah, banging. So let's, basically now we just gotta match the two shots in Photoshop. We've set up now at location number two. The first location was uh, kind of having a person in frame and how I create some of those images that have the kind of lightsaber or the light stick, whatever you want to call it. The next one's just going to be light painting itself. So we're going to use the Pavo Tube 2 15X. Again, the name gets me every time. But this time we're going to just do it, just literally light painting. There's no one going to be in frame. We're going to experiment with a few different things. Again, we've got some pools in the background here. Uh, this is kind of a classic spot, a more traditional shot of some pools, but I want to get creative with it. I want to create something different. I'm also thinking we can probably get some reflections from the sides here. It's also been raining, which is awesome, and it's not now. So again, that's always great to have when you're doing light painting because you get that awesome reflection off the ground. My settings for this, I'm going to change them. So for the last one, and it's kind of the same for any shot I do. I always change it around whatever the lighting is like around me. Obviously you can shoot at F8, that's fine. I've got a dirty sensor, so I'm gonna try and keep it a bit lower. Match it to whatever your surroundings are. So if your surroundings are really bright, then you obviously have to use a higher F-stop. And if it's really dark around you, you may have to then stop down to F2.8 or something around that. Um, I, as I said before, I always like to underexpose it, so then the light stick is not overexposed, and we can always take other ones after the correct exposure. And if we need to, we can then use Photoshop to blend them together. Uh, it's definitely easier just to do it slightly underexposed, get the light painting right, lift the shadows, boom, there's your shot. So the previous focal length was around 24, I think, between 24 and 30. And then for now, there's a bit more compression, so we were shooting at a 50. I'm gonna see how that looks. It is easier to do light painting on a wide angle. I usually like doing it at around 16 because you get a much more uh, kind of dramatic effect from the light. But right here, it's much nicer to have the compression with some pools. Um, and again, I'm gonna experiment and, and see how it looks really. On the new Nanlite Pavo 2, we have some uh, really cool different lighting effects as well. So uh, I just found the rainbow one, so I'm just gonna try that, see how it looks lighting it up. We're gonna do a two second exposure and he's gonna hit the 
shutter. Not really sure what I'm going to do, but we're going to just get creative. That's stupid. I need to come up. See that speed? If I point it down, or I point it away, maybe. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, that's way better. So basically the light was being uh, overexposed. So what we've done rather than pointing it to the camera, I'm now pointing it reflecting off the sides. So we're gonna see if we can do that the full way. <sighs> Jacket I'll be coming off in a minute. People are probably like, what the fuck? Okay, nice, hey. we've got two, geez, we've got like a little, we're gonna to have to unfortunately do a blend. Well, not unfortunately, we're gonna to have to definitely do multiple images here, stack them, and then blend them in Photoshop. Um, we're also gonna definitely do a shot that's way more exposed because that top whole section of St. Paul's is severely underexposed. So I wanna make sure that I've got the details. So that top half, let's see how it looks. I'm sweating, but well, I'm really hot, jacket's come off. We've just finished up at the second location right here, uh, looking onto St. Paul's. Uh, and basically I could keep doing this all night. It's all about just getting creative in places, finding frames, doing some light painting, and yeah, using any of the Nanlite Pavo tubes. Uh, there's even smaller ones, so I'm just gonna jump down here. So we've got a smaller one we've been using as a second light source actually for this video, uh, which I actually really like to light paint with as well. And this also just fits in my camera bag nicely and I can take it with me traveling. But yeah, so again, this is a really cool light to have with you. Um, I'm pretty sure we're finished up right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pack down and we're gonna head back. And obviously the next big thing about this light painting is actually the edit. So we're gonna go through the basics of that and talk to you about how to put it into Photoshop and then basically how I layer it and then blend them together. And then hopefully we get some pretty rad images. Here are the first two shots we're going to blend together. So I've edited the image in Lightroom with my presets that will be available very soon. And we're now opening up in Photoshop. So we're gonna create a mask. So we're gonna drag down to the bottom and create a layer mask. We're then gonna tap on that mask and we're gonna brush using the brush tool from the left-hand column. We're just gonna brush around. We've got quite a thick feather on, so it's nice and easy to brush in those colors. And yeah, we're just gonna basically zoom in and out check the different layers and make sure that we're kind of matching things. Uh, the light stick was actually a little bit short here, so I've just extended it obviously using the clone tool. And that's pretty much it. So I'm now gonna hit Command S to save it back into Lightroom. Next thing I'm going to do is crop it for Instagram. So I'm gonna have it as a four five crop. Uh, I also always change it to a one by one. So then I can see what it looks like as a square, sort of like on my home screen. And yeah, then I'm gonna play around with it and see basically how it will look on my Instagram page. This image was edited in Lightroom with my new presets, which are coming out very, very soon. The last thing I'm actually going to do this image is import it back into Photoshop. I decided it was quite messy and there was a lot of distractions. So as you can see here, I'm using the spot removal tool to clean up the image. Here is the first final edited image. Here is the next set of images we're going to blend together. Similar process to the first shot, I'm back in Photoshop and I'm creating a layer mask. I'm using the brush. So I'm gonna brush around the right hand side here to make sure that it matches. Now I'm checking obviously to see where those uh, spots are that I need to keep brushing. The next thing I'm going to do is highlight, drag and drop the third image, which is the nicely exposed shot of St. Paul's. And I'm then going to basically brush in the entire bottom half of the image where the light painting has been done with the Nanlite Pavo tube. Same process as before, we're back in Lightroom. I'm gonna crop it to a four five for Instagram and play around with that. I'm then going to put it at a one by one to again, see how it will look on the home screen of Instagram so I can make sure it's got some leading lines and it looks all fresh there. And here is the final image. Big up for watching guys. I hope you learned something from today's tutorial. The Lightroom presets will be dropping very, very soon and that was a little insight into how I edit on Photoshop. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, hit that subscribe button, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.